We live in a culture that teaches you that you need to be young to make a difference, and nothing can be farther from the truth. In today's video, I'm telling the story of how I first learned about Gertrude Jekyll, and I'll share the incredible life lessons she can teach us today. And the most valuable lessons have absolutely nothing to do with garden making. From the second I stepped out of the car, I felt like I was in a dream. Was I really here? Munstead Wood, the home of renowned English gardener, Gertrude Jekyll. Once upon a time, when I was a new gardener, I took a class on the principles of garden design. The speaker shared a list of books she claimed were the most influential books of her career. And one of the titles she shared was a book called Color Schemes for the Flower Garden by author Gertrude Jekyll. I wrote the book down so I could Google it when I got home. Imagine my surprise when I learned that Gertrude Jekyll was born in 1843 and died in 1932. Color Schemes for the Flower Garden was first published in 1908. What? A book published well over a hundred years ago? Come on, what can a book that old teach us today? Turns out that was a very foolish question. I visited Munstead Wood with my husband Tom in the autumn of 2018. The house was still privately owned at the time and we needed to make an appointment to visit the garden. Munstead Wood is located southwest of London. It takes about an hour and a half drive by car. We didn't want to risk getting lost, so we gave ourselves plenty of time to drive. We ended up giving ourselves a little bit too much time, and we ended up arriving almost an hour early. Imagine my utter shock when head gardener, Ms. Annabelle Watts, greeted us and asked if we wanted a private tour. Ms. Watts explained that Munstead Wood was Gertrude Jekyll's home from 1896 until 1932 when she died. And it didn't take long to see that all of Gertrude Jekyll's books are based on the work that she did at Munstead Wood. In her book, Gardens for Small Country Houses, Gertrude Jekyll actually talks about Munstead Wood. Here are a few quotes. The only portion with a definite plan is a small paved court between two wings of the house and a double flight of steps enclosing a tank, all forming one design. The court has a circular pavement partly between two boxed edge beds and partly bound by a raised step next to the house. Clematis Montana drapes one side of the wall and hangs like a garland from the lower beam of the timber framed overhang. The stairways on each side of the tank are punctuated by eight balls of clip box. The tank itself has a wealth of ferns growing out its cool north-facing wall, the water being let in by a finely designed lion mask, which was the work of Mr. G. D. Leslie. Munstead Wood was designed by renowned arts and crafts architect Edwin Lutchens. Jekyll met Lutchens in 1889 when she was 43 and he was merely 20 years old. They ended up forging a working collaboration and a friendship that lasted a lifetime. As I read more of Jekyll's books, I realized that she was sharing practical hands-on experience in her books, and that's what makes the information so timeless. She never offered up advice or recommendations unless it was something that she tried in her own garden. And when I was walking on the grounds of Munstead Wood, you could see the words that she wrote in the books. There is a sandstone wall of pleasant color at the back, nearly 11 feet high. At the foot of the wall is a narrow border, three feet, six inches wide, and then a narrow alley, not a made path, but just a way to go along for tending the wall shrubs and for getting at the back of the border. This little alley does not show from the front. Then the main border, 14 feet wide and 200 feet long, about three quarters of the way along, a path cuts through the border and passes by an arched gateway into the wall to the peony garden and the working garden beyond. Jekyll's advice in her books is so practical. In one book she writes, many years ago I came to the conclusion that in all flower borders, it is better to plant in long rather than block shaped patches. It not only has a more pictorial effect, but a thin, long planting doesn't leave an unsightly empty space when the flowers are done and the leaves have perhaps died down. And by far, one of my favorite Jekyll quotes is about the size of a garden. She goes on to say that the size of a garden has very little to do with its merit. It's merely an accident related to the circumstances of the owner. It is the size of his heart and brain and goodwill 
that will make his garden either delightful or dull. Reading about Jekyll's gardening achievements, super inspiring, but for me, it's the life lessons that she taught that made the biggest impact. Jekyll originally studied painting, and she was an accomplished painter and embroidery artist when she was forced to give both up because of failing eyesight. But she didn't stop being an artist. Instead, she jumped all in into gardening and approached gardening like a fine art. She was well into her middle age when she made this change. She published her first book, Wood and Garden, in 1899. She was 56 years old. She started photography in 1885 when she was 42 years old and included many photographs from her own garden in her gardening books. And I love her attitude on learning. The real way is to try and learn a little from everybody and every place. There is no royal road. It is no use asking me or anyone else how to dig. I mean, sitting indoors and asking it. Better go and watch a man digging and take a spade and try to do it. In today's language, I think that means put your phone down and get out in your garden and enjoy it. And I think that's great advice. By far the biggest lesson I've taken away from Gertrude Jekyll, you're never too old to start something new. Starting after her 55th birthday, she wrote 13 books, published over a thousand articles. And in 1930 alone, according to her website, after her 86th birthday, she wrote 43 articles for Gardening Illustrated. The woman was a force to be reckoned with, and she can teach us that you're never too old to start something new. We live in a culture that teaches you that you need to be young to make a difference, and nothing can be farther from the truth. Let's take Jekyll's example to heart and realize that you're never too old to follow your passion. Hey, hit me up in the comments and let me know what you think. And that's it for this video. Cheers, friends. I'll see you in the next one. Ooh,